Well, good afternoon and welcome back to the workshop. This is the first video in a new series for a Fairfax Engines traction engine. Uh, and that is a hybrid between a steam toy and a model engineering project. It's very, straight, very straightforward and very simple. Um, I've just received the parts from MyFood Boy on Fairfax Engines. Uh, and if you know anything about MyFood Boy, you will know he has thousands of videos, I think, about uh, model engineering and um, very accessible um, use of live steam and i really have ever having watched those videos i really wanted to build his little traction engine so i thought uh, with a little bit of a gap in the locomotive build this would be a perfect time to to fit in something that i can take to completion relatively quickly uh, and gain satisfaction from and then go back into the long haul on the five inch gauge loco so first let's see what we get in the box if you wondered what the barking was in one of my previous videos, it's this little guy. So what do you get in a MyFood Boy Fairfax Engines traction engine kit? Here are the two driving wheels. Here's the smoke box and chimney. Here's the uh, steering assembly. Oh, that goes uh, between the two driving wheels. It looks like you've got three driving wheels, but I think one of these is a casting for the flywheel. I think, I think they're the same pattern. This material is Mazak, I think, um, which is a an alloy of aluminium and zinc. And so it's fairly machinable. This is the flywheel for the uh, engine that will sit on top of the traction engine. Um, it's made of uh, like a zinc aluminium alloy and uh, it machined pretty well I guess. Um, I, had, I had some problems I was using a bit of a weak fixture for this so there was a bit of vibration um, but yeah generally pretty pleased with that so uh, let's get on with the rest of the engine. Now I can totally sympathize if you think to yourselves, doesn't he have enough projects on the go at the moment? Surely another one is going to dilute effort. Um, realistically, I have cut down almost all of my side hobbies uh, in preparation for baby coming along. And so model engineering at the moment really is the only one. It has a, um, like a four pronged approach. We have a five inch gauge locomotive, we have a two and a half inch gauge locomotive and a gauge one locomotive. The gauge one is just in the in the, the, the build book that I've got for it. Um, and all of those are fantastic plans, but they're all gonna require significant investment of, of time and energy to get anything back from. And the fact that they need a track to run against um, also means that getting that feedback from having finished it is gonna be a little bit more difficult. Or so, something like the MyFood Boy Fairfax Engines traction engine, um, there are far fewer components, uh, which means that I can build it a lot quicker and I can get that feedback a lot quicker. Um, and I'm hoping to have this, as like I said, as a, as a little toy to uh, stick on in my shelf uh, for a while and then when baby's old enough um, maybe give her the bug for live steam so uh, this is a 1 8 inch piece of silver steel held in the collet uh, and I am turning down by very short sections um, part of it to 1 16th of an inch which will fit inside the flywheel <laughs> Right, turns out turning really thin silver steel on the lathe, even in the collet, is really difficult. <laughs> so I'm going to come back to that. Um, I'm actually going to go through the drawings in order. The first bit's the boiler, which I don't have the copper for, uh, but I do have the phosphor bronze for some of the fittings. So the first fitting that I'm going to make is going to be the safety valve bush, uh, and that's uh, five eighths of an inch in diameter. Just a little thing with a threaded hole in it. So uh, rather than uh, suffer you through a wall of that, I'm going to time lapse you through it. You know, I've decided I don't actually like time-lapse, so 
You had that one. That's going to be the last one in this build, I think. Ow, that's super hot. Let's get tired of the back of that up. And then we have another part of the traction engine done. All right, let's uh, try this again. I've sharpened up the tool in the meantime. That worked much better um, with the sharper tool and the surface finish isn't too bad. I mean, I wouldn't wouldn't write home about it, but there we go. So it's just time to, uh, to part this off. No dramas at all. I've got a uh, 1 16th collet here holding the shaft I just turned. I think that's going to tidy up the end. <laughs> I've got it in a 1 8th inch collet this time holding the, the end of the pin rather than the shaft. go and it only took five tries this little bit is going to be an eccentric pin 1 8 inch diameter by 135 foul long Gonna reverse that now and take off the bit at the very end. Eccentric pin done. This is gonna be the crank pin. long so this is one eighth inch bright mild steel and I'm going to be using it to make the wrist pins so it's similar to the crank pin. I'll be turning down the center section down to 330 seconds and threading 8BA on the end and then creating a little boss uh, as the head of the pin. I've been using my uh, dial indicator, my caliper. I've been using my calipers to uh, set my um, Jenny calipers, and of course I forgot that you can uh, you can use these this combination. So, yeah, who'd have thought? I keep, I keep trying to do it over here, but actually here is fine too. Just realized I don't have an 8BA die which I need to thread the tip of this. Also did think about cutting this 
single point threading the end of that. Uh, but 8BA is 59 teeth per inch, and I do not have the change wheels for that. So I could also make a change wheel for that. But I think in the grand scheme of things, it's probably easier just to get an 8BA die. This piece of brass is going to form lots of pieces of the traction engine. But for now, I'm going to be making the cylinder out of it. And so I need to create a recess here to create two flanges and to reduce the diameter in the middle so that the thermal mass is, is low enough that when the steam engine is running, the boiler can get up to temperature without priming all the time. Right, so we have the outside here turned to diameter. We have the flange on one side and the flange is marked on the other side. But before I part it off, I need to drill down here for the bore. I've got a problem. My boring bar will not reach the full uh, 1.8 inches that this needs to be um, and this hole is so small that I am the you know the ratio I guess of thickness of the boring bar to the length means I think I'm just it's going to be a losing battle here so I've had a look at the drawings and there needs to be a flat on here to solder the cylinder uh, to the, the valve chest to the steam chest and the different the thickness of the wall between the flat section and the inside of this bore is about 50 thou so my thoughts are that i will drill this rather than um bore it and then i will lap it from there so i'll probably end up a couple of thou over um, but given that i've got 50 thou of thickness to play with and this isn't high pressure steam or anything like that i think that should probably be okay Here's the cylinder, all parted off. I've also realized that before I lap it, I really should drill the holes that are for the steam inlet and exhaust um, in this cylinder first, because if I drill them through, there's gonna be burrs on the inside and I'm just gonna have to uh, lap it or, or find some way to deburr it on the inside anyway. <laughs> May have drilled the uh, spot drill a bit too deep there. But we broke through into the cylinder at least with the correct diameter. <laughs> Excellent, you saw almost nothing of that. But rest assured, there are two holes here which are 330 seconds in diameter going down into the bore of the cylinder. It's going to be even more difficult to see, but in the chuck here, the auto lock chuck. I have got a 21 64ths of an inch slot drill. And the reason I'm using this bizarre size is that I can be fairly certain that it's sharp. Um, I need to plunge down into here and take off uh, from the very top surface here, I need to take off 70 thou. There we go. There is the cylinder ready to be honed and to receive the steam chest. I really legitimately love turning between centers. It actually makes me feel like a real engineer. And I know I'm not, but I'm like, I could totally go back to Stevenson's workshop and build locomotives in 1840. You know, even though I clearly have no idea what I'm doing, but this makes me think what I do. Well, that took a very long time, but uh, we have here the, the mandrel and we have a, a fairly tight fit on the, the cylinder. So I'm going to put some valve grinding paste on here and then just run this back and forth, switch around, run it back and forth and try and polish out the scoring from the drill in there. I think I was expecting it to be slightly more mirror finished than it is, um, but it is definitely smooth and no more scoring from the drill. 
So I think it's probably about as good a finish as I could have got with a reamer. Maybe I need some more fine grinding paste, but uh, I think it worked out okay. I'm gonna consider this complete. Well, the camera is just about out of battery, I'm afraid. So I think having completed about four or five parts, it's about time to say goodbye. And uh, hopefully I'll catch you next time in the next video in this series.